Welcome back to the Lackluster Channel. In May of 2020, following George Floyd's murder, the Minneapolis Police Department took to the streets to quell civil unrest. The city was in absolute chaos, composed mostly of waves of peaceful demonstrations, but after the sun went down, riots tore through the city streets. Over a three-night period, the looting and vandalism resulted in over $500 million in property damage, the second most destructive period of civil unrest in U.S. history, following the 1992 Los Angeles riots. Unit 1281 was formed to support other units in the streets. Six SWAT members, armed with various 40mm less lethal weaponry, loaded into an unmarked white van to hunt down protesters. Instead of chasing people around, yeah. we're going to hunt. You guys are out hunting people now, and it's just a nice change of tempo. Yep, agreed. Fuck these people. What do you think? Can you get those guys? We're gonna split up, drive down Lake Street. You see a fucking crawling out? Okay, great. Gas them. We can start that. Let them have it, boys. Let them have it. Get out of here. Right there. Get him, get him, get him. Hit him, hit him. Be very, very quiet. <laughs> Before we continue, I want to let you know of a new way I earn cash and gift cards, just for sharing my opinion on politics, pop culture products, and brands. Instead of spending hours scrolling through social media, I take two to three surveys every day and make a little bit of money so I can buy the dip. Share your opinions on the sanctions against Russia or Biden's State of the Union address. Need something lighter? Vote on your favorite musical artist, actors, and TV personalities. I'm personally using YouGov to fund my next batch of body cam videos. They're not cheap, and I can use all the help I can get. To check out YouGov for yourself, click the link in my description and start making money. And now, back to our video. Body cam footage from the officers shows they fired rounds at civilians who were not posing a safety threat, without warning or announcement. Civilians who were only violating curfew, a non-violent misdemeanor offense. They were seen baiting in protesters, attempting to draw them as close as possible before firing upon them. I got the long range one. I'm gonna send one down and send a few to try to push them to our uh, strike teams. Congratulating each other by laughing and exchanging fist bumps. Gotcha! <laughs> Don't hit, buddy. <laughs> Their use of force was in violation of MPD policies, applicable law, and constitutional rights. They drove their unmarked van without emergency lights, intentionally making it look like a civilian vehicle. As they drove down Lake Street, it was calm and quiet. And when the unit approached Jaleel Stallings' group, two officers fired their launchers at Jaleel multiple times, hitting him in the chest in response to being shot by men in an unmarked van, thinking that he had sustained life-threatening injuries, Jaleel drew his own legally carried firearm and returned fire. The van came to a stop, and as officers dismounted, Jaleel immediately discarded his firearm, laid flat on the ground, and raised his hands above his head, now realizing that the men in the van were officers of the MPD. The officers called out to each other that Jaleel had disarmed himself and was on the ground, but despite the obviousness of Jaleel surrendering, Officer Stetson repeatedly kicked and struck him in the head. Fucking shoot at cops? 
Jalil showed no resistance to the attack, but the officers continued to beat him for about 30 seconds, fracturing his eye socket and causing severe trauma that would only haunt him in the future in the form of paranoia and anxiety. None of the officers witnessing the unlawful excessive force against him did anything to stop or help Jalil. What he was resisting when we approached, yep, that's the way it happened. It happened, got it. As you can see from the videos, they seem to show a very different sequence of events than what was reported in the officer's initial reports than what's written on the criminal complaint. Jalil was eventually transferred to a nearby hospital and charged with two counts of attempted second-degree murder, multiple counts of assault, and a range of other charges. It took over a year for a jury to acquit him, finding that he acted in self-defense against the officers. On October 28th of 2021, Jalil filed a lawsuit against 19 of the officers on scene for unlawful seizure and excessive force, First Amendment violations of free speech and assembly, 14th Amendment violations of due process and equal protection clause, conspiracy to interfere with the assertion of constitutional rights, supervisor liability, and a Monell claim civil rights violation. The lawsuit alleges that the officers violated 17 MPD policies that limit their use of force, and that the officers concealed and misrepresented material facts. What is resisting when we approach? Finally, in May of 2022, judgment was entered in favor of Jaleel Stallings against the officers and the city of Minneapolis in the amount of 1.5 million tax dollars plus attorney's fees and costs. Overall, this incident showed that the Minneapolis Police Department officers engaged in a pattern of violence and malice towards protesters and civilians, making light of their aggressive and abusive behaviors against the citizens they serve. There is no official word on whether any of the officers involved were disciplined by the department or have had criminal charges filed against them. The most frightening thing about this entire situation is that this only really got national attention because Jaleel fired back and it was ruled in self-defense. The truth is that this is a fairly common occurrence that gets swept under the rug, and Jaleel is just fortunate enough to have made it out with his life. I don't know. Did we clear that car? Is this car clear? Clear, yeah. clear the car. Yeah. I got the tire. As always, thanks for watching. If you have a video you'd like to submit for review, use the link in the description or pinned comment. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification for future content. And remember to like, share, and comment down below of what you think of this interaction. It really helps the channel. If you enjoy our content, try our other channels, Lackluster Limited for criminal psychology content and The Odd Side for paranormal videos. Shirts and other merchandise are available at the Teespring store. Membership start at just a buck if you'd like to help further support the channel and get a slick lack logo next to your name. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. All links are down below.